Welcome to Toy Polloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy. Now recently, if you've been watching my channel, you'll have seen that I was very kindly sent an electro plating kit by Paul George from Gold Solutions. Now he sent me this because he thought it'd be a great way of recreating the chrome finishes that you get on some vintage toys. And if you've watched some of my restorations, you'll see that I've used some uh, rattle can sort of spray paints to do that. And the finish isn't that great. So the idea behind this kit is that you can take any object and plate it in copper. And then on top of that copper, you can put a nickel and chrome finish, which should give you a really nice shiny results. So the first thing obviously I had to do was actually learn how to use the kit and the kit comes with a set of tutorials that I worked my way through. The first thing that you need to do is to gold plate an old copper coin. So obviously in my wallet I've got a couple of old copper pennies and using the kit and the instructions I worked my way through that process of cleaning the coins and using the electro plating kit to gently dip uh, the coin into the solution and it almost immediately comes out gold plated. Now there is another technique as well that I learned which is brush plating where you uh, use a little sort of wand and dip that in and brush that over the coins and you get some really nice results really quickly. I was a little bit daunted by the kit at first but actually by the time you've done this first little section it's not so bad and I was quite confident that we'd be able to do better things with it. The next part of the tutorial required me to find something that had already been chromed uh, and this uh, teaches you how to remove the chrome off an object. So if you've got something that has damaged chrome, you can remove the chrome off it. Uh, again, just using a little wand of, with a specific solution on and to rub that over it and it removes that. And then you learn how to activate the metal underneath and then reapply some uh, top coating. And in this instance, we reapplied a gold coating so you can easily see that it's different. Again, it all seems a bit confusing at the start, but by the time I'd worked through this process, it actually seemed a pretty easy thing to do. It's just a case of remembering lots of different bits of information, but luckily it's all written down. So I was just working through that and the end result looked pretty good. The final part of the tutorial was gold plating a stainless steel spoon. So I'd uh, picked up some spoons from the local supermarket. They were very cheap. You could buy four spoons for a pound. Uh, and again, I just worked through the tutorial using the same sort of processes that we'd used before. Uh, but in this instance, you have to activate the stainless steel. So there's another solution that was required to rub on. And again, if you follow through the tutorial, it wasn't too bad. And in the end, I ended up with a nice gold plated spoon. So here you can see all the bits that I worked on through that tutorial. Here are the uh, coins. If I uh, show you first, that's an original penny. And it was a case of polishing that penny up so that it had a nice shiny surface. And then you gold plate it. And as you can see here, we've got a really nice shiny uh, gold 2P piece. That was uh, probably the easiest part of the process. Uh, nice and simple to do. And you can get some good gold coins. So I've got a gold 2 piece, and I've got a couple of uh, gold 1P pieces as well. These aren't quite as shiny because I didn't polish uh, the coins are enough up at the start but you can see they're still gold plated so that worked quite well. Then we have uh, the bit of uh, chrome that I removed and you can see on this side it's all chromed and I've removed it and here we have the gold sort of topping put back again. Uh, so it worked pretty well on that one. That didn't come out quite so well. Again I think this is a bit of a scrappy bit of, copper, of uh, chrome that I had here. It was just an old uh, sort of uh, radiator fitting but it did the job and it sort of taught me that process. And then the final thing is the gold spoon as you can see that's actually uh, come out really nicely. You can, in fact, you can see me shining there in the background. Hello, I'll wave to you. Hello. Uh, and it's uh, a pretty good result. You can see here is the original stainless steel uh, that we have of the spoon. And then here's the gold plate at the bottom. So it's a, quite a nice result. Next, we come on to the bit that's the most interesting bit to me, which is how to uh, copper plate pieces of plastic, which then could be chromed at the end of it. Now, this was a bit more of a long process. In fact, setting up the tank the first time took me about half an hour because I kept having to reread all of the setups that you had to do for putting things in the correct places because you have to make sure you have copper rods in the right places. They've all got to be in bags. Everything's got to be at the right temperature. You have to work out the uh, surface area of your uh, piece that you're trying to copper plate. So it all seemed a little bit confusing at the start. There's an awful lot to remember and uh, it, it did seem quite a daunting thing to do. Also, once you start the process of copper plating, it does uh, take a long time. You have to be prepared to wait at least three hours to do it. Now, the first thing that I wanted to copper plate is I had a couple of old He-Man arms. So I just uh, got those prepared. You have to spray them with uh, a lacquer or a primer 
and then on top of that you have to spray them with a conductive paint and everything has to be left to dry for a good couple of hours. Once that's all dried you then uh, mount it on a bit of copper and make sure that uh, you've got a good circuit going from uh, the copper rod to your item. Stick it all in the solution and get everything lined up with the correct amount of power going through it. I'm not going to go through all of those details here because it was quite complicated uh, but check out the Gold Solutions website if you want to find out more about it. And then after three hours you'll take uh, your arm out of the liquid and it will be covered in copper. Now my first go didn't work particularly well and I was a little disappointed at, at what had gone wrong with it uh, but I think that's the case with these things you have to learn as you go. So the first one didn't work particularly well so next time I had a spare day I set the whole lot up again and had another go and this time the result was much better. So let's take a look at the uh, two arms that I've so far copper plated and you can see the difference in the results. So here they are, these are the two arms. Now this is the first arm that I plated and as you can see it's a bit patchy, there's little problems here, we're missing bits, um, but it did plate so it's a, a good sort of first attempt. Considering I've never done anything like this before I actually, was actually quite pleased at how well that worked. It's certainly not amazing but you have to start and uh, learn these processes so I was quite pleased with how that came up. It's not amazingly shiny either, I didn't buff it enough but it was a good start. So the next weekend Here's the one that I did and as you can see that's starting to look lovely. It still has a few flaws in it uh, and a few little marks but I'm sort of learning how to get rid of those. You can see here uh, where I wrapped the copper wire around to create a sort of circuit I've got some little marks going on where it's sort of touched uh, and the uh, plating hasn't worked. But I'm working on another one now at this very moment and I think that should work a lot better. But as you can see it's really shiny and this is just copper at the moment. I haven't done any of the uh, nickel plating or chrome plating on the top. I'm going to wait until I've mastered the art of copper plating something before I go on to uh, doing the next stage. So it certainly bodes well for how this is going to work for uh, doing proper bits of chroming onto vintage toys. I'm still in the sort of testing stages. I think it will be a few more weeks of me having to play with this until I'm perfectly happy with uh, the results I'm getting but this isn't looking too bad. Now this one was plated for three hours so as you can see that's quite a long time to wait to get something uh, done but it's a, a pretty nice result. So it's not a quick process but it's going to give me some good good finishes once I'm uh, mastered the art of doing it. So I hope this video has been of interest to you and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Poloi. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Poloi on Twitter and Facebook.